Should you invest in pre-construction or resale? That is the question. What is a better investment? Investing in pre-construction, condos, homes, property that have not been constructed yet, or buying them ready-made? This is today's topic. This is Yossi Kaplan, Toronto, real estate agent and mortgage broker, research realty and search mortgage. And today I'm gonna to talk to you about the differences between pre-construction, investing in pre-construction, and resale. And today's focus would be on Toronto downtown condos. Why? Because that's the most amount of condos here and that's what everyone wants to know. And whatever happens in Toronto downtown will happen, will reflect everywhere else. So, what, let's review what spring construction is, what uh, resale is, just so we're all on the same page, and then we're going to look at some pros and cons of these two options, uh, the risks and the returns. Okay, so pre construction condo, very simple. I got a parking lot on an old building. We're gonna raise it down and we're gonna make the plan, get the permits, sell, pre sell the condos, you know, the VIP, the big lineups, all that stuff. Uh, give them assignment clause, right to lease on their occupancy, all that stuff. And of course, the deposits usually are 15% uh, within the first six months or 12 months, and then another 5% on occupancy. How does that work? When you buy the pre-construction condo, usually you give them a check for $5,000. It's kind of like your intention check, and that's uh, 10 days they can cash. It's the, the cool-off period, of course, as you know. After 30 days, you're gonna give them another check, uh, which is 5% on the purchase of the property, less than 5,000. Then the next, the next 5%, the second 5%, we usually will come around 90, 120, 180 days. And the last 5% will come anywhere between, you know, three months to a year. It really depends. The more you stretch out the payments, the better, and that's one great advantage of pre-construction condo. You only have to pay 50% on it in uh, three or four payments. And the last payment is an occupancy when you get your keys. That's not when you get your mortgage, that's when you get your keys and mortgage. The deed is done later, usually three to six months later after the fact. Okay, so that is what happens with the pre-con. Who would interested, who's interested in buying pre-con? Well, people who want to invest in the future, people who want to uh, spend less money right now, people who want to flip, you know, so a lot of people tell me, hey, can you find me a good pre-construction? I just want to flip it. I want to buy it, get the assignment right, and then flip it to somewhere else and make fifty, dollars $100,000. Okay, that's fine. Uh, a lot of people have done it. I've done it. You know, thousands of people have done it. Um, yes, you got to pay capital gains on it <laughs> and all that stuff. Uh, but that's pretty easy. I mean, you don't need to close anything. Uh, if you don't close, uh, you don't need to possession, you know, to get your mortgage right away, you know, to put a tenant, you don't have to move. You're literally buying an option, an option to buy a condo or an option to buy a home, an option to buy a property. And you're paying for this option in three payments of 5%. And once you're done, um, you got to wait for occupancy or you can assign it. Okay, so there's no land transfer tax, there's no closing costs, there's no keys, none of that until occupancy, but the process starts. You get your keys and you start paying your condo fees and taxes because um, you reside in the unit. And uh, when you close on it, then you pay for the rest of the unit, either cash or mortgage, key lock, line of credit, all these things. Okay, now that process can take three and four years. So in these three or four years, the market can increase a lot so let's say uh, you put 15% uh, down for a condo that's worth $600,000. 15% of this will be 90,000. Okay, so you paid 30, 30, and 30. You paid 5,000 with uh, when you signed it, and you pay 5%, 30,000 less, 5,000, 25,000. Say in 30 days, that's 35% in the first 30 days. Then let's say you paid another 5%, 30,000, 90 days after you signed, so three months after and the last one six months after. Then you wait another two and a half years and after three years you got your occupancy. Did, did I talk about the, I'm not sure if I said the, 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 the third 5% to bring it to 15% in uh, six to 12 months. And then you, you do nothing for two and a half years or three years, the building has been built. And when you get your keys, it's occupancy. Usually that's when you pay the last 5%. So that means you pay 20% for the property. Uh, sometimes it's on closing, which means not when you get your keys, but when you actually close on the property, it registered, deed it to your name. Uh, and that, that'll be 20%, then you get your mortgage 80-20. And then of course you gotta pay the land uh, transfer, the closing costs, all the levies, all that stuff. Now if you are uh, assigning before, and I'm, I'm, I do a lot of assignments where people go, you'll see we bought this condo, sometimes they buy with me, sometimes they buy with another agent, but they end up with me because of the videos or somebody told them about me or because they wanna work with me. And then we'll assign the property, we'll flip it for them and sell it to someone else. 
So that's the process of pre-call. With uh, resale, it's a bit different because you go, you look at some properties, you know, we go, like, almost every day I go look at properties with buyers, resale buyers. Usually it's in the afternoons or evenings. <clears throat> and we go look at condos or homes that are available. Sometimes it's condos, sometimes it's homes, sometimes it's a commercial building. And we go look at them, and if we put the offer and the offer gets accepted, we put the deposit what the offer said. Let's say we offered 800000 the property. Uh, with a 50,000 deposit, we give a, a check for 50,000. 50, and then we have a day to close on a property. It's usually 30 to 60 days, and we close on it right away. And then basically we have to come up with the rest of the money, uh, in this case 750,000, either via cash, mortgage, HELOC combination, okay? And then of course we have to pay the land charge to tax right away. We do not have to do any closing costs because we're not closing, uh, when I say closing costs, I mean with the new development. So that does not exist with the resale, okay? So the closing cost for pre-construction is much higher than buying resale, much higher, remember that. But the um, pre-construction takes a long time. So you have a long opportunity to appreciate and you may not need to close on it. So a lot of people buy these pre con in order to flip them, to assign them. They have no intention of closing them. Now, I'm not going to get into this right or wrong. It's a, it's a, we're going to look at it as a way to invest. It's a, it's, a, it's a form of investing, like you buy an, an option. You know, I have an option to later buy this stock, so I'm going to pay for the option. If the stock goes uh, in a direction that I bid on, and it, then I can sell it. If not, I lost, I lost my, uh, my option money. It's not the same, but you see it, it's an option. It's an opportunity. So I'm willing to put a little bit of money down. Now, obviously, with a condo, it's not a little money down. It's not like you put 10 bucks on it. You put thousands thousands of dollars. So you should never, ever, ever um, buy a condo or a property of any sort that you can't close on. I always tell people, like, don't do it unless you can close on it. The other day, somebody came to me, and they were late for a VIP. And now uh, investors already bought all the small units. But, of course, that person wanted the small, smallest unit. But they're not available. I said, well, you know, there's some really nice two bedrooms here and they're very, very nice units. I mean, they're, they're perfect and they're not that expensive actually comparing to everything else. Maybe you should consider investing in this one. And the guy said, well, I have to see if I, need, if I can close on them because uh, I have other investments and I gotta see how the timeline of my cash flow is. I said, very good, that's very smart because you should not buy something you cannot close on. It just, it's just wrong. Um, now, people do that, but I do not recommend doing it, and I ask you, don't do that. If, if you're not going to close on a property, don't gamble. Because when you gamble and you come to the um, option where you can't close, then you cause trouble for everyone else. Now, it will happen. It happens, and it, it happens all the time. Uh, nature is nature. Life happens. That's okay. But if you had the intention of closing and you couldn't, that's one thing. But if you're buying not to close, to flip, make sure you can Okay, make sure you have the financial ability to close on it regardless if you, if you found a buyer or not. So, now when you buy a resale, it's a little different because, first of all, you know what you're getting into. I mean, you can walk in there, you can see it, you can look at the floor, you can look at the condition, you can look at the lobby, you can look at the status certificate, you can look how the developer did things. So, there's a lot of assurance here that you know what you're getting into. However, in many cases, you'd, you're going to have to pay all of the money right away, almost right away in 30 or 60 days, and you're gonna have to own it. It's not, it's not a flip, it's a more of a long term, you know, like, you're not gonna buy a resale if you're gonna flip it in a year, it just doesn't make any sense because the resale is not gonna appreciate so quickly, and buying and selling is an expensive, tiring, energy consuming process, you know, I do this every day, there's so many tiny little uh, steps you have to do as a real estate agent in order to uh, list the property, find the buyers, close it all, negotiate all that stuff. It, it's, it's hours and hours of life. So be careful and um, make sure that you're making the best decision for you. Um, and don't take unnecessary gambles. It's just not worth it. It just causes too much stress. Uh, you can always find a good investment. There's, there's so many of them. So when you buy the resale, you know, like uh, here, look at this condo here. That's 525 Adelaide, by the way. You look at this condo here, or there you go, uh, Kingly, uh, 507 Adelaide. Um, if you buy one of these, you can, you can now walk into Kingly, although it's still an assignment, it hasn't closed yet, and you can buy this assignment right here, <laughs> right here, and, uh, and uh, you can see what you're getting into, which is really nice. Now, when you buy an assignment, it's kind of like you buy in a pre-construction still, because whoever is going to be 
the owner of, the, of that condo, when he closes, still will have to pay the closing fees. Okay, so there's... You buy an assignment, it's like buying resale with more expenses. So why would you do it? Because you really want that building. Or you can get the assignment for a little cheaper uh, than, the build, that, than it will be once it closed. Because once it closed, all the owners have not sold the assignment, but they still want to sell it. They put it on the market, but then raise their prices because they just went through the process. They just had to invest all this money for so long. And of course, they had to absorb the closing costs. Okay, and the land transfer. Now, land transfer, everyone has to pay it. It's like the HST on used cars. It doesn't matter how many times you sell it. The government wants it cut every single time you sell it, although it's the same product, right? When you, when you buy a used car, you have to pay HST on it, but that HST was already paid once when the car was bought from the dealer. But then when it goes down and hand-to-hand, -hand, there's still land transfer tax on the condo, like HST on the car. Kind of that's how it works. I don't make the rules. Um... So you gotta understand. Um, I have I have clients who come to me and say they really want a, uh, a unit in a certain building, like 488 University or a building in Yorkville, and they find the assignments, but it's still under construction, so they can't see it. So they say we're gonna wait until we can see it. And I tell them, well, you know, that's that's. I know why. Like you want to see it. Obviously, you want to feel it, see it, see what the view is. You know, open the drawers, check the fridge, all that stuff. Flash, flash the toilet, whatever. It's fine, um, but you're going to pay a little more because as, as it gets closer to closing, as the building construction gets closer to closing, you usually see prices come up. Why? Because the flippers, they've been sitting on it for so long, they're willing to give you a discount of the market uh, rate just to get rid of the assignment. They're going to collect some profit anyways, and they're going to share the profit with you. That's the trick of buying assignments. Nonetheless, when you buy the assignment, you also have to make sure that you realize you have some closing costs involved uh, over and above if you bought it for re retail, but if you, uh, resale. But if you want to buy a resale, you wait for that person to close. Maybe they already sold it to someone else, so you lost your opportunity. But if you did close and it's still available, they're going to want a little bit more money because they had to withstand, absorb the closing costs. So you see, there's no, there's no black and white here. There's pros and cons to everything. Obviously, when you buy uh, pre-construction, if you're going to close on it, everything is under warranty. You've got Terrian warranty, all the appliances are warranty, the building is warranty. So that's really nice. A lot of these in the resale, you know, they don't exist anymore. So if the dishwasher broke, you've got to get a new dishwasher. But, you know, if the deal is really good, dishwasher doesn't cost that much. It costs 700 bucks. No big deal when you're investing half a million dollars or a million dollars. A lot of people prefer to buy a resale. Um, be, not because they like uh, what's in there, just because they like the space or the building. And then they're going to go through another expense of renovating this space, which I've, I've done many times, uh, and then bring it up to whatever they like it to be, whether they're going to um, stay in it, make it a rental, or maybe flip it later again. Okay, so in order for to, when you buy the resale, you save on your closing costs, you see what you're getting, but you have to pay for it right away, and you may have a bit of extra expenses if you want to bring it up to date. When you buy the pre-construction, uh, your initial costs are very low, but later you're going to get high costs, okay, when you have to close on it. In terms of uh, uh, squeezing money out of it, you know, when you buy, when you buy pre construction, if you were to close on it, um, and you were to close in a large building, but there's, you know, many, many units there available, um, obviously when it comes to the market, all the investors will put the units for rent and for sale at the same time, so it'll be a bit of a glut in the building, and that takes about a year, sometimes two years, to, uh, uh, to subside. So when 525 Adelaide came on the market, there were so many units available for sale and for rent there. So everyone's competing with each other. So you're going to get a bit less rent. You're going to get a bit less income. But that's usually only true for the first year or two because after a year or two, a lot of the investors have sold the inventory and then the renters, they moved in. You know, they're not all moved the first year. Most of them stay two or three years. So then you have less units available for rent and yet less units available for sale. And now we have um, a lesser of a supply, but the demand, assuming demand is the same, then you can bring your prices up. So the first year um, when you are leasing or renting out your unit after you closed on it, you, you may not get as much as you would have gotten a year after. But nonetheless, sometimes you got to get out of the deal. And just to carry the unit for another year, who cares? I want my money now. I'm very happy with 100,000 profit. I'll take it now. Maybe next year it'll be 105, maybe 110, maybe not. You know, 
money in the hand is always good, so you should do that. So that is that is the these are the, the basics um, understanding between the pre-con, which is really buying an option with less money than now, not even to close on it. But if I needed to close on it, then I need more money, and I'm risking a year or two of, of slightly lesser income, uh, and of course closing costs and uh, and the resale which you know what you're getting into you can see it you can touch it feel it smell it you can go in there you can uh, renovate it you can make it your own although to a point right i mean you can rip out the kitchen and the bath in any condo that's fine you can't move the walls if they're structural or power or power or water running in there but, but you know that's that's what you're getting into so there you go if you have any more questions or if you're thinking of buying resale or pre-construction, give me a call, email, text. We'll have a chat, and uh, I'll run over your options with you. We can look at some uh, specific buildings that are coming up. We can look at some ideas you have. We can uh, bang heads together and see what we come up with, and make sure you get the best investment possible. That was, should you buy a pre-construction or resale? The conclusion is, it's up to you. It really depends on your personal narrative as an investor. That's it.